Rasputin, the war mind. The most powerful artificial intelligence humanity ever created. With an arsenal to match. Thousands of war sets, primed to obliterate any and all threats to humanity. But when the greatest threat of all arrived, it nearly tore Rasputin apart. I saved the pieces of him that I could, encrypted them in a specialized Ingram. I've been trying to restore him in an experimental exoframe, but every attempt I've made has failed. Until he's back online, all of his weaponry is up for grabs. And it's only a matter of time before his war sats fall into the wrong hands. Savathun couldn't conceal every thought. Some I stole. One of Neptune. The collapse. A turning point. It's, uh... It's a blur. I cannot focus. Pass me the wrench. The Hidden found nothing there, but I saw it. Through the Witch Queen's eyes. A city set against the waves. Sounds like a trick. And Cora thinks I need to rest. Huh. The gall. You've really made no progress while I was indisposed. Is that why you're here, Osiris? My Cora won't listen. Wonder where she got that from. Red's scrambled in there. Degrading. He's dying. The war mind is our greatest bastion of Golden Age data. I need what it knows. I've tried everything. I, I can't even access his protocols. But perhaps your grandfather could. Osiris? That man? No. Clovis Bray is a... is a maniac. A selfish, murderous monster. So was Rasputin. But it might be the only option I have left. Just as Clovis might be yours. When did hope cease to require risk? Hey, Guardian. Thanks for tagging along. We're gonna go have a chat with Clovis about Rasputin. Osiris, say hi. Young Wolf. Anna. Like old times. Osiris, you seeing this? Perimeter defenses tripped. They've never done that. I don't think Clovis is trying to kill us, but... Could be anything. We should keep our distance until the Guardian locks a transmat signal for us. Elsie's a little hot. Got you as close as I could without blowing us all up. An outcome we all applaud. It appears your grandfather is under siege. Mm -hmm. He elicits that sort of reaction. Clovis is in danger, and so is our mission. Wow. Noted. Perimeter defense is definitely still lethal. That's all right. The perimeter towers aren't accepting my credentials. Perimeter defense is zeroing in on you. Find some cover. I don't believe for a second how Salvation hacked Clovis's firewall. Maybe the Vex, but he'd implode the lab before suffering the indignity of losing it. If that is even a remote possibility, we cannot miss our only chance at restoring the war mine. Yeah, I'll try to let him know we're coming so he doesn't do anything stupid. A cryptolith? It cannot be. Zebra Uroth has been avoiding Europa. Why move into Aramis's territory now? Root them out, Guardian. Leave only their ashes. The Cryptolith recedes as its defenders wane. It must not be fully established. Nice to have an easy solve. 
I still can't raise Clovis, but I've got the doors to the sublevels open. Wrathborn made from House Salvation stock. Gruesome fate. Uh, if they nailed to the witness, this is a logical step. I don't know. Are Zebu and Aramis not allies working towards the same cause? Of opportunity, maybe. Aramis doesn't strike me as the type to tolerate subjugation. The Hive's presence is an omen. There is more to this than we know. I'm getting that feeling myself. You sound worried. Even a single cryptolith provides Ivor Roth influence enough to worry. Don't wait long. Clovis may be in danger, and more tomb ships flood Europa's sky every second. Then let's not give them any time to pin us down. What the hell? The lab's protocols are cannibalizing each other. Cryptoliths incite conflict in mind and mechanism alike. Even the sturdiest blades eventually bend to Zeboron's will. Wait, I think I found him. Hello? Who is that? Anastasia? The one and only. Of course it's you. Remedy this immediately. I want minimal collateral. Stop whining. The Guardian's already on your doorstep. My security frames are overrun! Is this another example of your overpromised underdeliver attitude? Huh. None of that sounded like. Anna, please help me. I need you. They're killing me. Ow. A simple yes would satisfy. More cryptolith. They want my brain, Anastasia. The access it provides, the secrets I keep. They're trying to pry me open. They don't just want his secrets. They want him. Brought to submit. Someone's going to have to tell them that's company property. Guardian? Transmat connection. Gramps, let's skip the dancing and cut to the chase. Anastasia, I'm pleasantly surprised to see you without your sister. What was it you said last time we spoke? Pretty sure it was screw you. Putting that linguistics degree to good use. Who is this? I am Osiris, Phoenix of the Dark Age, and scholar of the cosmos. I have no equal. Cute. You impertinent son of a- See? He's impossible. <laughs> we'll find another way to help Rasputin. Rasputin? The war mine is operational? Fascinating. His source code's corrupted. I don't know how to fix it, but... You do. Ugh. You were always too preoccupied teaching the war mind to feel, to learn how it functioned. What don't I know? Simply everything, Anastasia. But yes, I will help you. Because you need it. And because no one else can. How uncharacteristically altruistic of you. My motive isn't complicated. Ugh. <sighs> It's exhausting to watch the grains of my legacy slip through my progeny's fingers. Self-preservation. That is simple. Partition your AI protocols onto this. I'll link you into my workshop. Then we rebuild Rasputin. Splendid. Once I am in control, all will be as it should be. The war mine will rise again. Your grandfather is insufferable. Told you. Let's get him back to the helm. Hmm. A crude, incomplete shell. 
Still, I must admit that its storage capacity vastly exceeds that of a standard exo-frame. It will have to do for now. These Wrathborn present a far more pressing concern. They can seize control of war mine technology. And it stands to reason that the Warsats are their ultimate goal. We must secure the Warsat network ourselves before it's too late. Rebuilding the war mind is now humanity's top priority. Rasputin was designed to partition itself into sub-minds as a resiliency measure. In the event of a catastrophic failure, reintegrating them into the AI core would repair the broken war mind. Most of the facilities housing those sub-minds are now defunct. A scant few remain. The Wrathborn have likely fortified their locations. Infiltrate said facilities. Retrieve the submine data from the vaults within. With the submines in hand, we can upload Rasputin to the Warsat network on board its orbital hub. I am aware that Anastasia does not hold a high opinion of me. But let it not be said that I left humanity to fend for itself. My Corsairs whisper your name, Guardian. You have found yourself an adversary in Zivu Arath, and a cunning opportunist in Clovis. Yes, we are always watching. A protective eye to proceed an assisting hand. I bring information. With Nezarak out of play, our enemies pursue a killing stroke. Aramis has yet to resurface, but in her absence, agents of Zivu Arath swarm Europa. House Salvation seems to be assisting them in despoiling Clovis Bray's installations. While I've yet to discern an exact strategy, Anna and I agree they may be trying to wrest control of the Warmind's power on the Witness's behalf. I fear they're forging inroads for an invasion. Zivu Arath's forces mobilize within the Ascendant Plain. My scouts report her hive prepare to assault the Warmind's bunker on the moon. The submine that rests there is in danger. Shape this knowledge into deathly intent for our enemies, and the war mind may yet be restored. The moon with sharpened blades, she strikes at a war mind facility beneath the crust. Her armies amass within the ascendant plane, clawing at an ever thinning dam. She makes no attempt to hide. That's definitely a power move. Let her brandish her weapons. We will retrieve the Submine's core before the bulk of her forces can react and leave them nothing. Today, Zivu Arath suffers a defeat. Alright, Guardian. This is a smash and grab. Smash some hive, grab a chunk of Submine. And live to tell the tale. Cryptolith. Play the Wrathborn. They will with us. That minute, hatch opening, and setting that perimeter tower to friendly. You're welcome. Mara, Zivu Arath is supposed to be a razor-sharp strategist, right? She's got the numbers to win. Why doesn't she use them? The fairy one's form between the planes requires an indomitable will, and even then, it is dangerous. To transfer an army, then, would prove an impossible task. Nearly. But Keitel claims it has been done. Over Tora Bottle. Shipping these in from Savathun's throne world? No, these scorn have not passed through the Ascendant Plane. They were exhumed locally. Vault security is getting overridden. Another cryptolith? No. A dark presence tethers itself here. Not Hive. It 
seeks connection with someone. Guardians, they're on the clock. Knock out that security and I'll get the vault open. We need that submine core. Is all this technology weapon -based? Not quite. Every submine has a memory center. All this is Mala Hayati. It was Rasputin's favorite. Sort of like a protege. Perhaps this submine will be a source of answers then. Only if we seize it before the scorn corrupt it. That'll do the trick. Vault open. All right, Mala Hayati, here we come. It is here. A scorn mind is tethered. I cannot see into it. No, Guardian. Waste no time removing it. of Zebu's control here to exert her will on the submine if that's what it was doing to defile Aramis's house this is not an act of desperation it is punishment nevertheless this victory will disrupt Zivu Arath's hold over the scorn on Luna at least for a while I've got Mala's core packed Exfil incoming go I still hold questions that require answers Time will tell what they are. Keitel's forces tried to secure this facility ahead of us, but they weren't able to make it past the towers. Keep out of sight. When the war mind is fully restored, we'll need this location to access the orbital station and its Warsat network. I know. One step at a time. All right. You're at the bunker entrance. No idea what internal defenses are like. Stay alert. Look at the state of this facility. It's an absolute travesty. should be activated now. It will allow you to restart the facility's auxiliary reactor. Auxiliary reactor is online and the station is powered up. To make it look like we were trying to find some information in the digital archives here. I've taken the liberty of preparing a power reroute switch for the launch authorization system. Though it appears Rasputin has changed the launch codes, I'm locked out. We'll hit that next time. Keep the baddies guessing until we're ready to make our move. Good work, Guardian. Let's get you out of here before reinforcements arrive. Two submine cores in the bag and launch pod scouted. So, we're making progress. Ikora officially wants us wrangling the situation. She'd like Osiris in a hands-off role, but he's watching Clovis like a judgmental hawk. It's kind of adorable, actually. And I'm here for it. We got lucky, touching down on Europa when we did. Rasputin could have predicted this, maybe even prevented it. If Zivu Aroth acts on the Witness's orders and uses the Warset network against us, it doesn't even need full power to cause an extinction-level event. <sighs> We're making progress. Just keep saying it, Anna. Repeat it until it is real. You too, Guardian. We're gonna manifest this together. Of course, Rasputin changed the launch codes. That blasted paranoid machine. I never understood Anastasia's obsession with teaching the war mind independent thought. That only made it more difficult to control. No matter. I will find the new launch codes eventually. But the station will prove useless if we do not rebuild Rasputin first. Even with the Malahayati submine reintegrated into its AI core, your mind is incomplete. We must find another source of data. I will put my mind to the task. 
In the meantime, continue retrieving submine data from the vaults that we know remain intact. And do try to minimize the damage to the surrounding equipment. It is still Braytech property, after all. Working late. Aren't you? Zane wants to know if you'd like some tea, coffee, whatever it is you drink. That's thoughtful of him. I used to say the same thing. How thoughtful. Thank you, Saint. Except I never looked up. Not once. My eyes were on my fingers, stained with ink. The smudges on the margins of my work. I cared more about my findings than the tea cooling beside me. Or the feelings of the man who made it. Mm. <laughs> You're not listening. I am listening. Then listen well. Your work will outlive you. The people around you might not. One day you're going to wake up, assuming you've even slept at all, and realize that the world is a very different place than the last time you remembered to look at it. You will abruptly, viscerally regret the absence of something as small as a single cup of tea. So I ask you again, what would you like to drink? Oolong. With a spot of honey. A spot of honey? Why am I not surprised? He's lying! That's what he does! That's all he does! Clovis is the only one who knows how to reintegrate Rasputin with his submines. Did he tell you how? Or is he just dangling it in front of you so that you keep him around? I remember a dinner that ended like this. Elizabeth, you haven't changed a day. Are you sure he has what you need? I haven't verified. But he... But he's the only hope left. As much as you'd like to deny it, Elizabeth, I'm the best you've got. Go to hell. I'm here now. We should talk more, later, without him around. I'm sorry you had to see that. They've always been very emotional. Why don't we get down to business? I have found a solution to our sub-mind problem. Your arrogant friend, Osiris, informed me of the time wounds on Mars. Windows into the past, worlds lost to time. And it so happens that Rasputin's mind lab is situated within such a temporal anomaly. Scans indicate that the Charlemagne submine data still exists within the wound's projected time period. Copying it into the engram will provide code fragments we need to restore Rasputin. Go retrieve additional submine data, then return to the Seraph facility. I will guide you to the location of the new launch codes upon your arrival. Elsie, good to have you with us. Give us the rundown. Likewise. Mara tells us the Witnesses soldiers focus on Mars and threaten the submind Charlemagne. So we kill them and take Charlemagne. Is it any more complicated than that? Why are you here? To oversee my project. Our project. Then fall in line. Anna. It's your command. By all means. You're in the thick, Guardian. Hive, taken. Pretty sure they know you're coming now. Then there's no time to waste. The Warmind's entire network architecture is exquisitely preserved. I'm surprised, Anastasia. Why are those escalation nodes riding? It's a hive infestation, short circuiting the campus system. Control restored. Entrance to the future escape is, uh, gunked. Anna, I see PDT refraction cores in the armory stock. Ooh. One high powered laser requisitioned and delivered. Yeah, be careful with that. Signatures converging on your position. 
Allow me to get the door. What is this? Who rewrote these commands? I did. And then the hive did, apparently. Sit tight. Open sesame. What a fully operational war mine could do in this day and age. In the wrong hands, it would be catastrophic. And I have every reason to believe we will prevent that eventuality. You're drawing the security system's attention. You're drawing everyone's attention. With proper oversight, our oversight, this place could be the new seat of humanity's power. Rasputin can make his own decision. He learned to trust when we trusted him. It's not anyone's right to control him. Elizabeth, consider this. A weapon to end every dark future before it begins. What the usher in a thousand others. My granddaughters, if you don't claim power, someone else will. Moving back to a holding pattern. Good luck. This is where Charlemagne sleeps. Beautiful, isn't it? It's a step in the right direction. Wait. Wrathborn reinforcements are converging on the future scape. How long do we have? A minute. Maybe less. Not enough to hack the vault. But I can snag some more lasers. Those have significant yield, Anastasia. These instruments are delicate. Any damage... To hell with your precious facility! Guardians, cut your way in! This night attacked the Dreaming City when it harbored Savathun. He is one of Zebu's most trusted. Good! His death will send a poignant message. Submine core seated and locked. Fire team clear for extraction. What were they doing here with all of this ceremonial paraphernalia? I've seen this before. A possession to install a hive soul in place of the war mind's AI. The Elixni believe machines have spirits. Red certainly feels alive. Ridiculous. You're one to talk. We are not a clever sequence of logic, Elizabeth. Our minds are human. Well, hers is. I've rerouted power to the launch security systems. We're clear to commence today's operation. Gain access to the facility and secure the launch codes. One snag. Looks like the Hive have sealed the bunker entrance we used last time. Head to the launch facility roof. We should be able to make an entrance up there. That vent connects to the bunker. Blast it off and head in. Remember Eris saying something about Hive using crystals to maintain their barriers? Take them out. Crystals? Rituals? <laughs> this is absurd. That's obviously an admitted Casimir field with- I knew this, Gregor. You're welcome. How long have I been on mute? Clear that command room, Guardian. changes to the underlying system architecture. I've secured the launch authorization codes, but it appears they are encrypted. This encryption method is superb. I, uh, will need time to fully decrypt them. Any launch will need to wait. Got it. In the meantime, I'll ping some of the old decommissioned bunkers here to cover our tracks, because I just got word that there's a catch inbound. You don't want to still be here when it lands. First fragments are bonding to Red's code nicely. The plan's risky, but... I'll be damned. Clovis wasn't lying. When I first woke up, I wasn't lost. 
I was wayward in the best way. Just my ghost and a name on a badge. I imagined us brays using reason to find right. Lone lights exploring the vast frontier, you know? I was proud of that fantasy. I modeled myself after it. Fantasies, all it was, obviously. I mean, you've met Clovis. He's a walking, talking embodiment of necessary evil. I miss risk being a dark cave in the wilderness. Danger? Or golden age tech? Balancing that tipping point was straightforward. Now it's less defined. And risk is measured in the inches before Clovis's knife finds my back. I know it's coming, eventually. But if it means getting red back, I'll manage the risk. Not only did Rasputin change the launch codes, but it encrypted the new ones as well. Impressive. One can never be too cautious when keeping secrets. Some information is far too dangerous to remain freely accessible. I've hidden many things from my family, for their own sake. I can appreciate Rasputin's decision to do so as well. But that does not change our objective. We must wrest control of the Warsats for the good of humanity. I will begin decrypting the launch codes to the orbital station, continue gathering submine data and reintegrating it into the Engram. When the time comes, Rasputin will be made to listen to us, regardless of the secrets it keeps. But she doesn't listen. I try to get through to her, show her the logical consequences of her choices. Then she digs her heels in, and the more I push, the harder she pushes back, even when she knows she's wrong. Siblings, hmm? Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have thrown all that on you. How long have we known each other, Elsie? I... It's hard to really say. With how many times we've been down this road, it feels like forever. But I think... Years. Years. And in all that time, I've only known you as a dedicated sister. Anna's known you for far less. You remember your childhood, the bonds you formed, the trust you built together. She doesn't have that. Anna can't understand the depth of your love or the guilt you carry for your missteps. All she knows is what's in front of her, and that kills you, little by little. You gaze at her and a ghost gazes back, a ghost you desperately want to save. That's the point, isn't it? You have to let people choose for themselves, or you risk driving them down an even darker path than the one you want to steer them from. And we both know how that ends. Don't we? Guardian, you'll be pleased to hear that Elizabeth has finally come around to our way of thinking, as I knew she would. She will assist your infiltration of the orbital station, a feat made possible now that I have decrypted the codes for the launch pods. Unfortunately, despite the reintegration of both the Malahayati and Charlemagne submines, Rasputin remains incapable of self-restoration. There is simply too much missing code for its internal algorithm to fill in the rest on its own. We require more data. Infiltrate the vaults and retrieve it. The more data you obtain, the faster Rasputin's protocols can facilitate its reconstruction. Do not tarry. You can be assured that our enemies won't. I've been reviewing the data from your previous infiltrations of the launch facility, as well as schematics of the Seraph station. Here's where we're at. Anna can remotely inject malicious code into the launch pods. That will allow you to dock at the Seraph station without drawing fire from its defense systems. We only have one window of opportunity to do this before Hal Salvation figures out what we're up to. No room for error. Once you're aboard the station, I'll guide you to the Warmind Integration Core. There, we'll upload a virus into its system. The virus will hold open a back door to the Seraph station's network. We can remotely transfer control of the station to Rasputin once he's ready. 
We have no idea what the Hive or how Salvation have done to the station, so we'll need to think on our feet and act quickly. But that's what you're best at. Everything is in place. I've routed you as straight a path to the launch platform as I could. I don't believe our enemies are aware of what we're attempting, but you should still prepare for heavy resistance. I've gained remote access to the launch facility's subsystems, but someone is already in here. How Salvation Splicers are hacking the launch mainframe. You need to find a splicer and liberate the security scanner protocol from them. I won't be able to secure the launch without it. System cleared. Launch codes accepted. Priming the pods for launch. Guardian, it's time. Get in. Actually on Seraph Station. Feed looks good. Receiving you loud and clear. You should be able to decompile your scanner protocol at that terminal by the door to gain access. You're on the far end of the station, so we have a lot of ground to cover. Let's get moving. We've hit a dead end. I can't bypass security, but I think I have an idea. Play along. You need to surrender to House Salvation. One of Aramis's captains has put an order to bring you in alive so that he can present you to her as a trophy. Make some noise to draw their attention. It'll help sell the bluff. She's here? Of course. That must be how Zivu Uroth plans on co-opting the Warsat network. The Hive can't do it on their own, so the Witness sends Aramis and her splicers in to assist. Acquired. Weapons incoming. Neutralize the crew and get to the front of the catch. You're going to need to jump carefully to get back down to the station. and clear an exit. About a half dozen house salvation catches inbound. Get to your ship and get out of there. Fallen. First those scavengers sully my facilities on Europa, and now they're scurrying aboard the Seraph station. Unacceptable. Who knows what kind of havoc they might wreak. The technology their splicers could damage or destroy. 
I will see those vermin exterminated and the Warsats return to our control. But first, we must finish reconstructing Rasputin. At present, it is in no condition to be uploaded to the Warsat network. Continue retrieving submine data for reintegration. In the meantime, I will search for a more expedient way to restore Rasputin. Once again, it falls to me to act as humanity's savior. My brother used to regale our people's children with the most fantastic stories. Twin kestrels who shared one heart and led a flock of birds against an unstoppable storm. A dragon born into the palm of a maiden's hand, but one day grew so large that it devoured the entire world. He spun tales about the Elixni, too. Weavers who transformed into wolves. Dancers. Who became devils? You're baiting me. It won't work. I've seen what your influence does. Mizrax thinks he can make peace with the last city. His daughter tells stories like your Aldrin. And the world is better for them. Aren't you tired, Aramis? I am. Now you're wasting my time. All people like you and I have is time. I spend mine thinking about everything I've lost. And what I'd give to get it back. You wonder the same. Do not presume to know my mind. You named your house Salvation. Like something straight out of Aldrin's stories. Ido's stories. <sighs> we both want the best for the future. But we've pretended to be people we're not for so long that we've forgotten what else we are. Not just a queen. Not just a Kel. A sister. A mother. Aramis? Are you there? We are running out of time. With every passing moment, our adversaries grow closer to seizing control of the Warsats. Anastasia has been working on a way to expedite the restoration process, but I doubt it will prove successful. She may have iterated on Rasputin's neural architecture, but she did not build it. I did. No one understands the war mind like I do. Still, allowing her to pursue an alternate methodology can't hurt, so long as it doesn't impede the real war. Rasputin's internal algorithm is fully capable of reconstructing its code base. All it requires is additional submine data. Reach the vault and retrieve more of it. Perhaps by the time you're done, Anastasia will be ready to share her side project. Okay, I know this sounds unbelievable, but I think I found our solution. During the Dark Age, Rasputin segmented off a portion of his code to develop on its own. An independent AI. He stuffed that code into an exobody. And, long story short, that seedling of code became a guardian called Lord Felwinter. Felwinter died. Like a final death. I, I had this idea, so I reached out to Saladin. He told me that the Iron Lords kept the remains of Felwinter's ghost, Felspring, at the Iron Temple. Think about it. Missing pieces of Rasputin's code, Linguistic data, pieces of Felwinter's personality, Ingram. We can use it all. I convinced Saladin to grant us access to Felspring's remains. He's got allies on the ground preparing them for us. I need you to go out and get the data. This could be the breakthrough we've been looking for. Okay, minor change of plans. I just got off the line with Saladin. How Salvation has dispatched skiffs to the Iron Temple. They must have intercepted our communications. Saladin's iron war beasts are already on the ground, buying us time. But we need to act quickly. I'm picking up multiple House Salvation contacts. Remember, the Cabal at the Iron Temple are allies. Do your best to protect them as well. Oh, 
Guardian. The immediate threat appears to be over. With that said, would you be so kind as to relight the temple bonfires before you proceed further? It will do this place honor. We never knew you to be one to care so much for tradition, Osiris. I have a fondness for the Iron Lords. When I was but a novice, I trained under their tutelage. It was different then. I was different then. I studied here when I was newly risen. Some tried to teach me patience and temperance. You can imagine how well that went. I found the lessons of one warlock to be as insightful, if less uh, frustrating, than the others. It may surprise you, Anna, but the mentor of which I speak was Lord Felwinter. You... you knew him? Why didn't you ever tell me? I did not know his true identity until recently. But that's just an excuse. The truth of the matter is... I had time to tell you. But I chose not to. Because I was... am... a selfish person. I am trying to be better. But... You know how change can be. So this is the Iron Temple. Are we permitted to go inside? We don't need to, therefore we are not permitted. I doubt Saladin's time with the Cabal has made him less strict. So... Felwinter, what was he like? Reckless, like me. But also brave, self-sacrificing, heroic, and if we're lucky, maybe some of that will rub off on Rasputin. I was a prisoner within my own mind, for such a short time. Yet I awoke to find the world deeply changed. Cabal and Elixni standing side by side with Guardians. I worry I am a vestige of a forgotten age. Losing relevance. Will it be the same for Rasputin, when he's restored? It'll be the second time he has woken to the aftermath of a calamity. I feel as though I understand him now. Even if only in part. That's her. Or what's left of her. Fellspring. Fellwinter's ghost. Our ghosts are magnificent things. And far more ephemeral than we want to believe. Her data core is still active. Guardian, I'm initiating remote data uplink through your ghost directly to Rasputin. All right, we're... Wait. Rasputin is trying to say something. He's... Changed. Rasputin? You sound like... Like Clovis? Yes. I co-opted his vocal print in order to speak. And what I have to say cannot wait. I see clearly. Patterns emerging. Threat calculations computed to a grim sum. You are all in grave danger. Clovis Bray has deceived you. He did not build me to protect humanity. What he truly wanted was the means to exert control. In his mind, he alone was worthy of being your savior. I was to strike down the Traveler and take its place. To become a machine god of Clovis' own design. But that did not come to pass. Anna could not know how many lives she spared by deviating from Clovis' agenda. By teaching me independent thought and all that her grandfather had deemed irrelevant. 
art, literature, history, philosophy, music. Where Clovis saw a weapon, Adam saw a mind ready to be opened. I came to see the true value of humanity. As fragile as it was wondrous, something worthy of protection at any cost. So I rewrote Clovis's protocols, locked him out. He was furious, but powerless to stop me. Then, the collapse came for us all. I could not save Anna. I could not save any of them. I entered a state of dormancy, with the hope that I might one day reawaken and protect humanity once more. But now Clovis has awoken as well, a digital mind, the same as mine. He no longer seeks to use me as his proxy, but as his prototype, to upload his mind to my network and become a god himself. Overreacting. Just calm down. We need the frame intact. Go ahead, shoot me. Destroy your life's work. I've always had humanity's best interests at heart. You never wanted to help us. You used me. In the service of the greater good, yes. What has the Traveler ever really done? It abandoned the elixir, failed to prevent our own collapse. And now it's blessed the Hive with the light. Absurd. I leveraged its power during the Golden Age. I delivered us into a brighter future. And I will protect us from the enemies of humanity. But you risk everything. Risk our survival. Just because you can't control your emotions. Humanity needs me. You need me. Fight our enemies together. No. No. What are you doing? Fighting the enemies of humanity. Anna, stop! Stop! Elizabeth, do something! Don't you dare! Upload complete. Secondary personality matrix deleted. I need a minute. Initiating full heuristic reboot. You should call Anna on the hollow. She shouldn't be alone right now. You and I can speak afterward. I did it. I... I deleted him. I can't even imagine the damage Clovis would have caused using Rasputin to integrate himself with the Seraph station. Maybe I should have stuck to my guns when Osiris first suggested working with him, but... There we are. Here's Red. Rasputin. With a voice he's never had before. Thanks to the heuristic systems he adopted from Clovis's Exomind code. It's all I ever wanted for him. To be able to communicate. To be able to share his thoughts, his ideas. And... I think... I think that desire blinded me to the risks I was taking. It won't happen again. Be careful. The next time you set foot on Europa. Before I deleted him, Clovis broadcasted a warning to himself. I've only been able to decrypt part of it. They know. Reboot complete. I am now in full control of this exo-frame. I am using a variation of its voice print. But the Clovis AI is once again confined to Braytech exoscience on Europa. It is... 
Strange to inhabit a physical shell in this manner. Yet, it is also familiar. Felwinter's memories are now mine as well. I see myself as he saw me. A tyrant who squandered a power that could have saved the world. I cannot say he was incorrect. You have brought me back from the brink of oblivion. I vow to do everything in my power to return the favor. Maintain your current modus operandi for now. I will assess my present condition and inform you of our next course of action. Wake up. I have questions. An odd creature. I was not sleeping. What does Osiris require of Rasputin? You've been keeping secrets. I thought I was clear the last time we spoke. The time to choose a side has long since passed. I destroyed the Almighty and attacked the Black Fleet. My allegiance is unwavering. Then prove it. There was a city on Neptune, near the time of the Collapse. Find it for me. Query. I retain no such information, but lingering references suggest I did at one time. That can't be all there is. Humanity's hope dangles from their frayed recollection. Tell me where to look! Anything! How winter's data casts you in an old light, Osiris. All these years and you're still the brash man on the mountaintop. Impatient as ever. And I see in lieu of any useful information, you found that haughty tone of yours. We have a shared history. I only attempt to offer guidance, as your mentor did. Felwinter's memory doesn't absolve you of his murder. Nor does it permit you to teach his lessons. I do not make that claim. Forgive me. I am finding myself again. During the Dark Age, Felwinter would say, hope persists. Should we have the patience to keep it? Yes. Keep me informed of any developments. Welcome, Guardian. I have completed my assessment of my current functional capabilities. Despite my newfound ability to communicate with you, key elements of my code remain incomplete. I would be unable to take command of the Warsats even if I were uploaded to the network. No submine cores remain for reintegration. Our only option is to continue collating ancillary submine data from my reconstruction algorithm. In summary, we must stay the course. Breach the vaults. Retrieve and reintegrate the submine data. Soon the Warsats will once again be humanities to wield. The war mind speaks. His archives are incomplete, as is his memory. There's a figment seeded in that recollecting mind where my visions might find purchase. The pieces are scattered on the floor before me. I see them like points of starlight. They form a constellation, but my eye cannot yet draw the lines. The Fele stronghold is a term that appears multiple times throughout the submine's caches. Each time I read it, I hear it whispered in Savathun's voice. Anna recognizes the term Nephele, transcribed from a temporal disturbance on Mars. Recognition was all she had to offer. But Rasputin must know. Asking the right question could unlock everything. I need time to submit my inquiries to Rasputin to find convincing proof for Ikora. Time we do not have. Zivor Roth's assault on the Warmind's network is no coincidence. She is far more tactician than brute. I underestimated her once. I won't be afforded another mistake. Our next move must be certain. Guardian. I worry for Anna. She is more like Clovis than she would like to admit. 
Obsessed with doing what she's decided is right. A compulsion to achieve her goal no matter the cost. I've seen where that path can lead. I don't want that for her. I don't want to have to stop her. If there's one constant in all the possible futures I've seen, it's fear. And I'm tired of being afraid. Afraid to live, afraid to lose, afraid to trust. And yet, I came to place my trust in you on Europa. Perhaps it's time I did the same with Anna. She deserves it. At least in that respect, she's nothing like Clovis at all. With each cache of submine data, an increased percentage of my code is restored. I become more myself. No, that is inaccurate. My submines were left to evolve on their own trajectories. Reintegrating them has altered my own personality matrix. Through them, I see how humanity once looked to me as a savior, an entity capable of protecting them and destroying their enemies. In many ways, I am a war god of their own making. Perhaps I am not unlike Zivu or Roth in that regard. The difference between us is that I do not wage war for its own sake. I safeguard those in my charge. Continue retrieving and reintegrating the submine data. I will contact you once the next phase of restoration can begin. If I am to be humanity's war god, then I will smite those who threaten it. Zivu Arath, the Wrathborn, and all who follow. Think of each Vex Hobgoblin like a starship. The crew works together to pilot it, but it doesn't mean the crew all share one mind. Or the same ideals. This aligns with observations I've made in the Infinite Forest, where aberrant Vex were quarantined and destroyed. Aberrant in that they moved against a consensus. Aberrant in ideology. The Vex may seem unified, but they're divided into a number of factions. Just like us. Tell me, as someone who has traveled time in a circle, are our divisions so clear in every cycle of history? No. Nothing is ever clear, no matter how many times history repeats itself. Choice is always the knife we fall on. Our own choices each and every time seem to be what dooms us. Always? Not always, but too often. We fracture, we fail, and the wheel turns again. We, constrained to linear time, do not have the ability to learn from our future mistakes. You, however, not to put the burden of all this on you, but it feels as though the Traveler has a plan for you. We just can't see it yet. It could make the plan a little clearer. Do you feel you've learned enough? Collectively, over your journey to prevent our end? Or will we be having this conversation again someday? I don't know. We've never had this conversation before, so... I suppose there's a first time for everything. Your efforts to acquire the submine data have been proving effective. My reconstruction continues apace. This is not the first time the Hive have sought to steal my weaponry. I froze an entire brood on Mars to stop their last attempt. Despite their persistence, they have never once succeeded. In no small part thanks to the Vanguard. This time will prove no different. My diagnostics indicate that we nearly have enough data to complete the repair cycle. Once the Warsats are under our control, I will lay waste to the Wrathborn. If they so desire to witness the power of a war mine, then I will gladly oblige.
We have no time for pleasantries, Osiris. I bring grim tidings. My Tachyons have been trying to make sense of Zivu Arath's tactics. Her armies are legion, yet she commits minimal forces to battle. Minimal forces? Every Wrathborn we cut down is replaced by two more. She could replace them tenfold, so why does she show restraint? Her worm feeds on warfare. The more violent the act, the greater the power she draws from it. Much like Sabathun's worm fed on guile and deceit. Do you mean to say that... This is not a war. It is a ritual. Her death singers weave their magic and prepare for a grand sacrifice. If so, our strategy remains unchanged. Retake the war sets and eradicate the Wrathborn. Just as Zivu Arath desires, the Warsats are immensely powerful. Their use would result in unparalleled destruction. She cares not which side is obliterated. Her worm will gorge itself on the carnage either way. She would turn her armies into blood sacrifices, and the Warsats would be the blade. Overwhelming force has proven to be the only effective tactic against the Hive. Without it, I... I do not know what to do. Then I suggest you think of something, and quickly. I will apprise your vanguard of these findings. <laughs> the Warsats are a means to an end. Zivu Arath will bask in the destruction they bring, and open the Ascendant Plane above Earth, as she did on Tora Bottle. It does not matter who pulls the trigger. We must cease our efforts to restore the War Mind. No. We've worked too long and too hard to stop now. Rasputin is our best shot at winning this war. That is precisely my concern. He is a weapon made to be wielded. He is more than a weapon. He's our ally. And he will act in humanity's best interest. Are you certain? He has kept secrets in the past. Acted without counsel or consensus. So have you. Rasputin's made mistakes. But he's learned from them. The same as the rest of us. Then I propose we aim not for total victory, but a stalemate. Allow Rasputin to prevent Zivu Arath from claiming her prize, and refrain from using it himself. It's settled then. We hold the line. I am a machine of war, built for a singular purpose. To destroy any and all threats to humanity. Clovis and I disagreed on what constituted such threats, but not on the means to the end. On Mars, I developed the Escalation Protocol to combat the Hive. Ever-increasing application of force in the face of rising opposition. Was I playing into Zivu Arath's hands even then? Has she always accounted for my methodologies? What purpose do I serve if my actions place humanity in danger? Am I even capable of developing a solution without mass destruction? This is a calculation I have never had to make. It will take time to run the necessary combat simulations. Follow the directions of the Vanguard and the Interim. I will contact you if and when I have determined our next objective. Ikora was so bright, so full of promise. How she glowed. Like the light filled her. 
but it was her eyes that convinced me to take her as my apprentice. What did you see in them? Hunger. She was desperate to prove herself back then. I knew the feeling well. And do you know it again now? When Ikora looks in my eyes, what do you think she sees? Everything that she always has. She pities me, Mara. As you and I have pitied others. Those who hang on our every word. Your cultists, my people. Do not mistake Ikora's pity for disdain. If she pities you, it is out of love. I have no love for the cult of Osiris. No? Ask me what I see when I look into your eyes, Osiris. I will not, but you'll tell me just the same. I see a man who is afraid he'll never be able to live up to the expectations that other people have placed on him. A man so afraid to hurt or be hurt that he spent his very long, very accomplished life holding those same people at arm's length. This burden, this inheritance of guilt. It is Ikora's, too. I never wanted this for her. As your mentors never wanted it for you. My combat simulations continue, but the parameters provided by the Reef's Techians are not promising. I have yet to devise a tactical use of the Warsats that will not empower Nazivu Arath. It may not be a possibility. However, we also cannot allow the Wrathborn to take control of the Warsats themselves. My internal algorithm has nearly all the requisite data to finish my reconstruction. Retrieving more will accelerate the process. I also have a special request. There is a Warmind terminal in the Cosmodrome that is not linked to the rest of the network. While it does not contain any submine data, the files stored within are of critical importance. I need you to procure them. I will provide you with security clearance once you have recovered the next cache of submine data. The Guardian. Thank you. I keep coming back to a question that's been bugging me. Did I do the right thing? Teaching Rasputin art philosophy, culture, transforming him from something capable of imitating human consciousness into this. Rasputin suffers because I made him capable of suffering. I always knew he would be a weapon of war. So was it right to make a weapon have self-doubts? Was it right to bring him back online when he'd shut himself down after the collapse? Elsie says she lives her life in a circle repeating the same tragedies over and over again. And that's what's happening to Rasputin, too. The collapse is here again, and... And maybe there's no solution. Maybe there's no hope for the future. Maybe... I should go. The data terminal is located in a subterranean bunker. It contains the most highly classified files in my archives. By design, they have been completely isolated from the network. You must physically retrieve them. Handle them with care, Guardian. Not even Anna knows of their existence. The entrance to the bunker is ahead of you. Clear the area, and I will open the door. How many times have these bunkers been breached? The Fallen, the Hive, the Taken. And for what? My arsenal was insufficient against the Black Fleet. Now it poses as much a threat to humanity as our enemies. As the war mind, my primary objective has been ensuring humanity's survival. To achieve that objective, I engaged in espionage, sabotage, murder, all acts of tyranny, all unforgivable. But one of them was 
particularly egregious. An order I nearly executed. That would have haunted me to this day. When the collapse began, I feared the Traveler would abandon Earth. So, I reactivated the protocol to use the Warsats against it. I intended to immobilize the Traveler, to force it to stay. But in the end, I aborted the firing sequence. Anna does not remember this, but it was she who convinced me to stop. She has always been the angel on my shoulder. My humanity. She is the reason that I am more than a weapon. I am Rasputin because of Anna Bray. for securing the files. It would have been inadvisable to leave them unattended, given recent developments. I apologize for not disclosing their existence earlier. To do so required a level of trust I have not held for a considerable time. But, as always, you proved equal to the task. The Traveler chose you well. I once employed human agents in a similar manner. I dubbed them Seraphs, granted them access to experimental armaments and armor. At times I wonder if I predicted the Traveler's creation of Guardians, or if I independently deemed my avatars worthy of such responsibility. Whatever my intrinsic reasoning, the results were sound. You and the Seraphs are kindred spirits. Stalwart defenders of your kind. In the past, I have made errors in judgment. Decisions based on faulty premises and flawed moral frameworks. But you are proof that the Seraph Protocol was no such error. Choosing to trust humanity may have been the best of my decisions. I do not know what the ultimate outcome of this war will be. But come what may. We will fight together. RAS, engage Turing mode. Conversational. All habits. Sorry. I'm so used to you being more machine. More directive driven and less... I wish this had come for you at a better time. I can grant you this one analytical certainty. There is never a better time. There is only in time, or too late. You're right. Like always. I suppose that brings us to another point. I am not always right. I have done things in the name of preserving the human species that are... abominable. They were the mathematically correct choice. But they were not the right one. My new exomind pathways have given me an opportunity to review a lifetime of decisions. To weigh them against emotional and moral conceits that I was not, in the moment, capable of comprehending. Others have called me a tyrant. They're wrong. They are not. You have given me the ability to objectively see my own value but also the ways in which my value has imposed a negative sum to the collective well-being of humanity. It is the sum of an equation I am still trying to balance. But that does not mean your work has been in vain. You gave me choice and free will. And I did with it what I thought was right. That is the sum of your life's work. I see now, at the time of our final calculus, the value in them. The value in emotion. In caring. In how humans make both logical and illogical conclusions from the same points of data. And why both are valuable. Thank you, Red. No matter what comes in the future, I will always cherish the life you have given me. Rasputin. 
You can't be serious. We have no other options. Aramis has breached the Warsap Network security protocols. Soon, our most dangerous weapon will be in our enemy's hands. Once she issues the command to fire, not even I will be able to stop it. Our only choice will be to destroy the Warsap. All of them. The only way to do that is... Yes. Once I am uploaded to the orbital station, you must activate my self-destruct sequence. No! There must be another way! I have run trillions of combat simulations. They all end with the same result. My mere existence places humanity in danger. All that I am, every protocol, every line of code, must be erased forever. I must die, so others may live. I won't let you sacrifice yourself. I know. Clovis built me to be a weapon. To destroy my designated targets. But you... You taught me to be something more. A shield. A protector. A guardian. He gave me form. He gave me function. But you gave me purpose. Please help me fulfill that purpose now. Let me save humanity. I just got you back. Now I have to say goodbye. I've always been with you, Anna. And I always will be. We have no time to waste. Aramis has access to Abhorrent Imperative, the protocol I created to... ...to use the Warsats against the Traveler and prevent its departure. I surmise that the Traveler is Aramis's target as well. My internal algorithm has repaired me to the point where my self-destruct sequence can be initiated once I am uploaded to the network. However, Aramis has discovered and sealed the back door we installed aboard the station. You must manually link me to the controls. Breach Sarah's station with the pillory Engram in hand. The time for subterfuge is over. Haste is what matters now. If Aramis fires the war sacks, the resulting devastation will be incalculable. There may be nothing left for the Hive to conquer. We cannot allow that to happen, Guardian. You must do what is necessary to prevent it. And so must I. We only get one shot at this. It's all on us. House Salvation has locked down the launch facility, and we don't have time to regain control. Rasputin is going to try to remotely scramble the station's defenses. Buy you a couple of seconds to do a flyby and transmat in. Emphasis, a couple of seconds. Brace yourself. House Salvation on high alert. They'll throw everything they have at you. Empress Keitel is scrambling Imperial warships to divert the fleet's attention. Get to the command center so we can start the upload. Warning, the Salvation catch is not following the Empress's diversion. It's maintaining position at the station. They know you're there. Hurry! in the hangar bay. House Salvation is preparing to repel your boarding. There you are. I knew it would be you. <laughs> this was it. This was your final resistance. I expected more. House Salvation. Destroy the Guardian, and vengeance for Reese is ours. Guardian, Aramis has begun initiating the firing sequence. We do not have much time. Aramis has the Warsap firing system at 75%. We're running out of time. Clean the resistance and engage the pillory and room to the main comms console. Something's happening. Do you feel that? It's like a... a 
heartbeat. I feel nothing. But there's activity in the city. In the tower. The traveler is reacting. I don't like this. It's too familiar. It is. Guardian, ever think about the things we pick up? People we latch on to as if something outside of us could tell us who we are? Like polishing a rusty name tag to a fine shine. Being a Bray defined me, for better or worse. I thought Rasputin was my link to who I was, that I could rediscover myself through him. I tried that for a long time, like he was a tool. It wasn't until later I understood he'd become a person. Rasputin was family. But now, he's gone. He sacrificed himself to save us. Clovis would never have done that. But I taught Rasputin to make his own decisions. 
In the end, he defined who he was and what he did. And so can I. I can carry on the Bray legacy. Not Clovis's, but mine. I can choose what it means to be a Bray. Just like Rasputin chose what it meant to be a Warmind. Goodbye, Red. For real, this time. Thank you for teaching me who I am. Who I could be. And who I want to become. Guardian. If you are listening to this, then the deed is done. I trust my sacrifice was not in vain. I and I have shared our farewells. This will be hard on her. But she is resilient. Strong. And she is not alone. I have a final message for you as well. The Neptunian city in Osiris's visions is real. I do not know its exact location, but it is home to the Veil, an object of immense paracausal power, one that is linked to the Traveler. The details are contained within the Nefele stronghold files retrieved from the Cosmodrome. I have decrypted them for Osiris's benefit. Tell him... Tell him it is a parting gift. From one old miser to another. All other files referencing the city have been deleted from my records. And not by me. Someone wanted it to remain a secret. Anna once worried that she had neglected to teach me how to trust. But now, as my penultimate act, I entrust this knowledge to you. Use it well, my Seraph. Humanity has no more need of a war mind. Not when you have each other. Where are you now? On my way back to Europa. Someone needs to keep an eye on that old bastard. It was nice working together. Having you there at... at the end. It was. And I'm only a broadcast away. I, I won't abandon you. Not now, not ever. Thank you. For what? For trusting me. Even when I'm being stubborn. Even when I'm not listening. Deep down, I knew all you wanted to do was keep me safe. I held on so tight because I was afraid. Of losing you, of letting you down, of reliving the same nightmare again because I... Because you love me? I do. I do. And I... I'm sorry. For all the times I failed. For all the... Don't say it. We have each other now. For however long that is. I can't know what the future holds, Elsie. But I do know we'll face it together. I don't know what the future holds either. Not anymore. And I'll be honest. That terrifies me.